Southern California. Do you see it? So this is my DJI Mavic Pro. This is the drone that I used to use all the time when I'd be traveling to just like different places and I would use this for aerial footage. But this past year when I was living in Houston, I broke unintentionally the gimbal when we were going ATV. So I haven't been able to use it ever since, but I just got it fixed, sent it into some repair shop and it's pretty stable. So we should be all good to go today. I'm gonna take her out. Come on now, James. There we go, as long as, as long as I don't break it again. Uh, we're gonna take this out to PV, go for a flight, and we'll see how she does. footage looks amazing she's flying great and since i was already in the area i decided to stop and go for a quick dive Decided to follow this fish for a little bit, then out of the corner of my eye, there we go, baby! First lobster of the day. Luckily for her, she was a little bit on the small side, so just kind of left her to hang out. But check these out. These are actually really, really cool. This is called a giant black sea slug, and it's the largest sea hare species in the entire world. They can get almost three feet long, they're super slimy, and right here in Southern California. anemones which are really cool looking we've got some bluish green ones here today i mean i guess they're here every day but but right now with the low tide you can really see them things have just got a piece of fish sucking in on my finger and one interesting thing about sea anemones is when it's low tide like this they kind of start to close up so if you're if you're not knowing what to look for this almost just looks like some rocks right you can walk right by it but Really, this is just a big old balled up sea anemone that has just closed up. And one thing that's interesting about sea anemones is if you squeeze them, a bunch of water comes out. Check that out. And you might be wondering, you know, why did it just spray out a bunch of water? But these things have to, they had to learn how to survive over the years, um, I guess, you know, centuries of how do we survive during times of low tide while we're exposed to the sun for, you know, multiple hours and hours on end. So one way that they're able to live is by storing water in their bodies. And that's what allows them to, you know, be cooking in the sun for hours and hours during low tide on hot days. And yeah, pretty cool. Right now, obviously it's kind of a bit of a cloudy day. So they don't have to worry too much about, you know, the sun, but if it were a really sunny day, good thing they got all that water stored up in them so that they could be just fine. Okay, and check this part out, because this is probably my favorite part of the dive, just because of how rare it is to find an octopus out here. So towards the center of your screen, you're gonna see this thing that looks like a pearl. That's actually an octopus's eyeball surrounded by one of its big purple tentacles. Just super well camouflaged, kind of takes a trained eye to see it. But at first, I didn't even notice it, so I started collecting shells, basically like a six-year-old. And right here is where I noticed. So I start shoving my arm down the hole, trying to reach the octopus, start spazzing out with the camera clearly. But this thing was so elusive and quick, it just shot out the back of the hole. I didn't even really have a chance. Um, overall, you know, didn't get to spend much time hanging with the octopus. But here you can see we double confirmed it with the video. Sure enough, it was an octopus. So I'm pretty pumped on that. And it was just a great day overall.